Hi, this is Athena Starseed and we are talking about the mirror dimension and this is part two. So, um, how do you know if you're in the mirror dimension? You can tell you're in the mirror dimension when you realize that every single person in your life are little aspects of your soul. So they come to show you little gifts for yourself. So it's almost like an Easter egg hunt to find what those gifts are. Because a lot of times, we were talking about in part one, that we're blocked by seeing the gift or being able to unlock the gift or open the gift when our bodies are full of um, corrosion. And that means stagnant energy, uh, blockage of flow, uh, poor nutrition, lack of exercise, um, negative thought systems, looping, um, mental constructs, um, negative patterning that are uh, re reoccurring. I call those loops. If you've ever seen the movie The Matrix, you'll know that when Neo saw a black cat, he was like, wait, pause, there's a black cat. That means that there is something more to pay attention to in the hologram. And so as we go deeper into the mirror dimension, and we start waking up, we're able to take 100% responsibility to be able to respond. And that doesn't mean that you're never gonna be triggered, okay? Because we are in the human condition, having our adventures. However, what it does mean is that once you realize that you are being triggered, you can remove yourself and observe your reality and then extract what it is teaching you. And this is how you can unlock yourself and you can clearly see the mirror. So whatever you um, resist persists. Whatever you resist persists. So if the, some of the things that we're resisting right now, we have another opportunity to look closer at these things. So um, currently we are in the month of August and this is about solar energy. Leo is bringing us this vibrant illumination, the sun, the enlightenment is raining down on us so that we can take center stage in our own life. And that means we can um, let go of playing victim. This person made me feel this way or this is always happening to me, all the poor me's and you know, all the complaining and the grumbling and the kvetching, we can release that into a nice deep breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Imagine breathing in golden sunlight and exhaling all the negative energy, all the carbon dioxide. We inhale the white light of the sun and we exhale what no longer serves us. So once we go inside and we still ourselves, When we come back to this present moment, we can see ourselves in our mirrors more clearly. And there we enter the mirror dimension. And we say, there by the grace of God, I am. And so I was talking about in part one, that when they say, if you think you're enlightened, go home and visit your family. And so, you know what? I waited a very long time to visit my family because I was very reactionary. I had stumbled on all kinds of contractions and adversity with being a rebel and being upset and angry. And I had all this toxicity in my liver and, and all this fear in my kidneys and all this grief in my lungs and all this sadness in my heart. And so, I went on a very, very specific spiritual journey for the last, oh, I would say decade, a good decade. Constantly reviewing my, my, um, my thoughts, my emotions, and the, the uh, toxins in my body. So I utilize very specific ancient practices like fasting, 
um, pranayama, breath work, yoga, qigong, tai chi. Um, I also did some Shaolin training and studied with a Shaolin master. Uh, and I found that moving the energy in my body helped me start clearing some of those negative emotions. Because what I found out is the emotions, they're not in your mind. I mean, people think, oh, they're just thought forms in your mind. Yes, you can have negative thought forms in your mind. However, the hypothalamus, um, in the, in the chemicals in the brain that start cascading down and infiltrating the different organs get lodged in the organs of the body. So your liver has to be considered for, for detoxifying anger. And so you can do really delicious breath work to release anger in the liver and start imagining your liver smiling. And then you rubbing your liver and giving your liver chi and energy and smiles and love. And then what happens is it flushes out those cyclical thoughts that infiltrate the mind, okay? Um, same thing with your kidneys. When you experience uh, fear, extreme amounts of fear for um, loss of security, finance, relationships, um, separation, anxiety, anything, change of job, change of home, change any direction, even letting go of things that you really love, that you're used to, like habit patterns. That's about breathing in love to the kidneys and smiling at your kidneys and then creating a little circle and rubbing your kidneys and loving your kidneys and bringing love and energy to the kidneys because the kidneys are what's going to detoxify the bloodstream and the bloodstream is our life force and so if we're getting our life and our love filled up with cosmic energy by utilizing the energies of the sun the solar energies pouring in through the top of the crown, like a little hole when we're babies is right here, like a little doll that has a hole. Imagine pulling in cosmic light and breathing it all the way down the spinal column and then exhaling like you're spouting like a whale, pouring that apana, that negative energy, that toxic waste out of your liver, out of your kidneys, out of your lungs for the grief. Then you can fill your body up with more light. And the more light that we carry, the more reception that we receive, the more enlightenment that we have, and the more grace we can access in our dimension to actually see the mirror dimension. And then it's very easy to transfer the energy and find out what is this mirror teaching me and how can I love it? What is this mirror teaching me and how can I love it? What is this mirror teaching me and how can I love it? So a lot of times when we incarnate, we, we can't understand how we chose the family we chose. However, we have pre-birth agreements and we decided to say, listen, this is the lifetime where I'm gonna remember who I am. I'm gonna keep my life on purpose. I'm gonna use the little tiny grains of sand in the clamshell to create the pearl or in the oyster shell to create the wisdom pearl of my life. And so our brothers and sisters and our families, our mothers and fathers, our, our aunts and uncles, our cousins, our soul family, our cosmic family, our universal family, our, our, our earthly family, these are all energies that are gonna help refine our soul and change it from lead to gold. And when we see that, the mirror doesn't have smush all over it. You know, I constantly um, refer to this with my clients when I do readings. Um, somebody has a problem with, he said, she said, my boyfriend did this, my father did that, my mother did this, my sister did that. And I say, hey, do you ever wake up and see that your hair is messy and you look in the mirror and you say, oh, look at my hair, it's so messy. I'm gonna start combing the mirror and wanting it to change. And why isn't this mirror changing? I'm combing the mirror. And has anybody ever tried to comb a mirror? Your hair doesn't change until you comb your own hair. And that's the self. And that's why detoxifying the body, breathing deep, regular exercise, eating high vibrational foods, drinking plenty of water with lemon, which is a cleanser, and some pink Himalayan salt for your electrolytes, purifies the stream in which you can capture the um, energies, the vibrations. There's like radio waves and octaves going all the way up, up to infinity. 
And if you're in a victim dimension, you're getting fear, 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 rage, 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 anger, anger, anger. It's him, not me. It's him, not me. It's her, not me. It's her, not me. And so we have all of that stuff that we feel trapped by. And as soon as we start cleansing out this, it's like if I clear my glasses, I can see clearly myself. So how do, we, how do we clear the mirror? How do we wipe the lens? How do we see the mirror dimension clearly with compassion, love, grace, allowance, acceptance? By doing the inside work. There's no outside job to be done. What we can do is if we um, are upset with something in our hologram, in our mirror, we need to retreat to the self. And that's the last thing that most people want to do. But I will share something with you. There's a famous quote that Wayne Dyer used to say. He would have a problem. Oh, by the way, it's a little dated because I don't know how old you people are that are watching this. But Wayne Dyer was a spiritual author and a teacher. And he was on Oprah a lot. And he had a special on PBS. His best friend was Deepak Chopra, which many of you know. And so he'd have a problem and then he would call up Deepak and say, hey, Deepak, I have this really serious problem. Please talk to me. And Deepak said, did you meditate? And he said, no. And he goes, call me back. And he'd hang up the phone. And I was like, oh, you mean the solutions to the mirror dimension are on the inside? Yes, yes, yes. The inside the inside is the mirror dimension because that is when we clear that on the inside then we can look clearly at the outside mirror and understand intuitively what's happening why it's happening how to course correct what's happening and how to upgrade and sometimes when we sit for long enough in our stillness we'll receive such peace such joy and such grace that when we come out of the meditation we're excited to make those changes we're excited to let go of those lower limiting beliefs those lower um, density food choices and I'm not judging anybody on where you are on your evolution because everybody is having their own experience and we came here to experience this life and at some point when we want to, when we choose to end the suffering of the cyclical living and the complaining and the victimization and the suffering. I mean, you know, back in my 20s, I would love to call my girlfriend and just come back, come back, come back, come back. And then in my 30s, I was like, oh, I'm just getting tired of just hearing myself say this. And then in my 40s, I was like, oh my gosh, I just love being alone. I don't need anyone to complete me. And now I'm coming into the sage of my own uh, stream. And there's a balance of coming in and also going out. So there's this beautiful infinity loop that you're in the world, but you're not of the world. And also too, what's very important about being able to see the mirror dimension clearly is to put the oxygen mask over yourself first and then go out and do your service work. Because you have to, be whole and integrated before you can help anyone. So I want to share something that I received this week from a very magical friend of mine. Shout out to Solomon. Um, he said, imagine there are two rooms and in one room, 10, I'll say 11, 10 to 11 people are sitting there, closing their eyes, breathing deep and working on themselves, working on their core, silencing their mind and becoming still and strong. And then imagine a second room where nine people are running around crazy and the 10th person or the or one of the people in there, or this, the 10th or the 11th person are running around trying to wrangle all the nine people to get them to do stillness or to change their mind or to upgrade their fiber optics. And so when you think about that, it's more effective in room A than room B. Because if you just mind your own mind, if you, if you just clean your own internal mirror and you realize what's happening with your real eye, your third eye, then when you come out here and you can look at things, you're less likely to react or to judge. 
and you're more likely to have allowance and compassion. And I'm not saying, oh, be a doormat and you have to just let everybody walk all over you. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you will be able to navigate through your choices. We all have free will. And one of the greatest gifts when we start elevating our consciousness is to honor everyone's free will. And if people want to be in a war dimension, that's okay. They'll enlist and they'll fight for something, anything. If people want to be living um, you know, in, in a yoga construct, they'll be doing yoga. If people want to uh, be a, a, an actor or an actress or a singer or whatever they want to do, everyone has the ability as a fractal of divinity to co-create with the universe. And that's how we every day wake up and have a blank canvas. And we can paint on that canvas with our free will choices, how we wanna live, what we wanna eat, what feeds our body on a cellular level, how we can transfer that pranic energy into our life stream, how we can let go of things that would recreate suffering, and how we can upgrade belief systems that can create higher streams of joy, love, peace, and blessings. And when we're happy, we every day wake up and we do what we love. We give ourselves permission to do what we love as creator beings. When we realize the mirror dimension reflects to us all these wonderful choices to paint, to sing, to dance, to dream, to write poetry, to make love, to, to you know, swim, to surf. I mean, this year I started surfing. I never thought that was even a dream of mine. And when I realized, wow, I'm gonna do something that scares me. I hadn't been in the water in such a long time. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get on a surfboard, I'm gonna take lessons, and I'm gonna feel the flow of the ocean. And I'm gonna trust that these fish love me. <laughs> and if I'm supposed to encounter a shark to face my fear, so be it. Hey, Athena? Yes. Yes, you can. And then do you want them to be back to back? Sure. No, that's fine. Okay, I'll schedule it now. Okay, I'll be right out. Okay, so look at that. So here's what happens. You do what you love, which is making these little clips and sharing about the mirror dimension. And now what comes in? Joy and gratitude bring abundance. Abundance is a vibration equal to joy. Gratitude is a vibration equal to abundance. And so I will leave you with this, to have a more abundant life, to access the mirror dimension, to know how to generate and channel your chi and send out the frequencies for any soul that needs to be helped or loved or shifted, that there's an ability to have something send out with heart beams and then return back with gratitude and love. This is Athena Starseed, Peace and Blessings. This is part two on the mirror dimension. Part three will be coming up soon. Stay tuned. I'd love for you to describe. I mean, subscribe. <laughs> describe who you are in love and subscribe if you're interested in more of these detailed readings.